The taxi's radio was tuned to a classical FM broadcast. Yana checked Sinfonietta. Probably not the ideal music to hear in a taxi caught in traffic. The middle-aged driver didn't seem to be listening very closely either. With his mouth clamped shut, he stared straight ahead at the endless line of cars stretching out on the elevated expressway, like a veteran fisherman standing in the bow of his boat, reading the ominous confluence of two currents. Aomame settled into the broad back seat, closed her eyes, and listened to the music. How many people could recognize Yanacek Sinfonietta after hearing just the first few bars? Probably somewhere between very few and almost none, but for some reason, Aomame was one of the few who could. Yanacek composed his little symphony in 1926. He originally wrote the opening as a fanfare for a gymnastics festival. Aomame imagined 1926 Czechoslovakia. The First World War had ended and the country was freed from the long rule of the Habsburg dynasty. As they enjoyed the peaceful respite following Central Europe, people drank Pilsner beers in cafes and manufactured handsome light machine guns. Two years earlier, in utter obscurity, Franz Kafka had left the world behind. Soon Hitler would come out of nowhere and gobble up this beautiful little country in the blink of an eye, but at the same time no one knew what hardships lay in store for them. This may be one of the most important propositions revealed in history. At the time, no one knew what was coming. Listening to Janacek's mu music, Aomame imagined the carefree wind sweeping across the plains of Bohemia and thought about the vicissitudes of history. In 1926, Japan's Taisho Emperor died, and the era name was changed to Shawa. It was the beginning of a terrible dark time in this country, too. The short interlude of modernism and democracy was ending, giving way to fascism. Aomame loved history as much as she loved sports. She rarely read fiction, but history books could he keep her occupied for hours. What she liked about history was the way all its facts were linked with particular dates and places. She did not find it especially difficult to remember historical dates. Even if she did not learn them by rote memorization, once she grasped the relationship of an event to its time and to the events preceding and following it, the date would come to her automatically. In both middle school and high school, she had always gotten the top grade in history exams. It puzzled her to hear someone say he had trouble learning dates. How could something so simple be a problem for anyone? Aomame was her real name. Her grandfather, on her father's side, came from some little mountain town or village in Fukushima Prefecture, where there were supposedly a number of people who bore the name, written with exactly the same characters as the, as the word for green peas, and pronounced with the same four syllables. A -o -ma -me. She had never been to the place, however. Her father had cut his ties with his family before her birth, just as her mother had done with her own family, so she had never met any of her grandparents. She didn't travel much, but on the rare occasions when she stayed in an unfamiliar city or town, she would always open the hotel's phone book to see if there were any Aomames in the area. She had never found a single one, and whenever she tried and failed, she felt like a lonely castaway on the open sea.